Hi everybody, hope everybody's fighting fit. Um, you have to excuse the lighting in here. Um, it's absolutely roasting in this loft room. Uh, if I had any more lights, I would literally melt away. So it may be a bit dark, but maybe that's a good thing with my face. So this is the um, Matchbox kit I was talking about uh, during the Spitfire build. So it's taking its time, really easy kit to put together. It's more of a paint job really than anything else. But it caught my eye, a bloke I know called Kevin, every now and then he comes across uh, collections. And there's quite a few kits that were very interesting, but the Matchbox one caught my eye. And it was as cheap as chips as well, so it was no brainer. I've never been a real big fan of Matchbox kits. Um, the 130 set scale series was fantastic as far as subjects go. And I've, I've built most of them except for the Tiger Moth. Uh, the Puma, uh, one thick set scale Puma, eh? Wow. But it was such a horrendous kit. Um, the amount of work needed. Um, a good base. That's all I can say about it. So what's next? Uh, I don't know. I've got the FX Gannet on order, like every man and his dog has. Uh, when and if that arrives, I will do an inbox review. Just purely just to keep the channel above the water. That's all. So I want to thank all my supporters out there for people who've left great comments. It's much appreciated, always is. So let's get on and let's see what I did with this vintage Matchbox kit. Let's look around the box. And then in the box, ah, the different colour plastics, the memories come flooding back. Sometimes it's worked, but from what I remember, not often. The detail here at this scale is very good, even by today's standards. These decals aren't the original ones, so I might be able to use them, but at this scale I might not bother. Clear instructions and a comprehensive colour guide. I'm going to start cleaning up some of the parts and some of the smaller parts while they're still in the frames. All the parts released and cleaned up, well most of the parts. The illustrations on the instructions are good enough for me to do that. Now the figures are the key to this finished build. If I can get them right, we should have a decent little diorama. Now the small items I've left on the frame, I'm going to release them as and when I need them. We'll take a quick look at the diorama parts. The detail all around here is very smooth. And you could say replace these parts or replace a whole lot but that's not what this build is all about. Let's build the Jeep first. Now there are all sorts of items to add to this Jeep and I'm still wondering whether to add them now or paint them separately. Also the steering gear is really crude, very overscaled. I may have to have a go at trying to recreate them. I may paint the wheels and the hub separately, I'll have to think about that one. 
The Chevrolet truck next. The axle is going to be replaced. It looks like some sort of deformed slug at best. So I'll use some plastic rod to replace it. Like the Jeep, not a bad build up. I wasn't happy with the bulkiness of the steering wheel, the parts, and I've got to be very careful here because most of the small parts look oversized and it's knowing when to stop. So I am going to make a new one, or two of them. Was it worth the effort? I've also updated the steering columns as well. So I'm ready to paint and I'm still undecided whether to add the wheels or paint them separately. So my first coat will be an off black. Then I'm thinking of applying an XF60. I found the XF59 a little too dark. And I think even with the FX60, I may add some buff. So I'm spraying all over, but I'm not bothered about painting the underneath of the two vehicles. Next, I'm spraying buff just from above, a couple of light coats, that's all. Next, I'm going to add a tone to both vehicles using burnt umber, khaki grey to create a very thin wash. Next, I need to wet the whole surface of the vehicles. The excess water is shaking off, remembering not to let go of the vehicle. So this wash, providing I've got the right tone, colour mix, will break up that flat surface and give it a slight dusty tone. The wash dry, you can see how it's given that slightly dusty sandy look. So I need to accentuate, bring out all that surface detail next with another wash. So using these two colours to make that mix, could have done with some clean water. Second bath of the day. So shaken, not stirred, I can apply that dark wash now. This should pick out all that nice detail.
Before I add a highlight by dry brushing, I'll paint some of the details, such as the tyres. So not much to paint here, and what I have painted has been applied very thinly. You can see the paint underneath just showing through the tyres. Let's dry brush with Greg. Looks like I'm going to have to paint those tyres again. I've also painted all the ancillary parts like the jerry cans and the drums. Talking of which, I rebuilt the homemade sign that sits on these two drums, as the kit part once again looked too bulky. There are no decals for this sign, which is a shame really, so I've created some artwork and I think this is the Italian spelling. I'm not too sure. I'm sure you'll let me know. Just to cut the back of the paper with some varnish, this will aid adhesion to the plastic part when the paper is dry. So I'm using Tamiya gloss to act as glue here. So the drums here are painted first with this stuff. Then the blue is a Vallejo mixed, which is then scratched off to reveal the silver underneath. Then a burnt umber wash is applied over these areas. Very simple. The figures are next and I've given them a few light coats of Tamiya White. Now these figures are very nice, the best thing about the kit. So my first light wash will be made up of these colours. And I'm being careful how I'm applying this wash as I want to keep those white areas of the flesh clean. I've just turned off the lights, I don't know whether you can see the colour any better. I've also painted the boots and other things. Once again, very thin light coats. These colours are going to be used to mix for the dark wash on the uniforms. So you can see here the dark wash has filled in all the recess areas. So once this wash had dried I found that the dark wash was too light. An oxymoron for you out there. So I ended up making a darker mix which looks a lot better now. Next, a dry brushing of deck tan for the highlights. Now for the flesh tone. And on top of that, a dark flesh tone wash. This is made up of these three colours, with a bit of this red and a hint of blue. It's a case of messing around until the tone looks right, always remembering that the colour will look lighter when dry. I may seal all this in with a tiny satin varnish, I don't know yet. As always, I'm making this up as I go along. So you can see here I did add a satin varnish, and the final touch was a tiny bit of Tamiya panel wash around the midwifery areas. So the area I've been dreading, the base. Now it will be easier to start from scratch, especially with the vast amount of diorama products out there. Far easier. But I want to use as much of this kit as possible. That's what this build is about. So this part here does need my attention. I need to sort out that seam and cover the back here. So I'm using some plastic card just to improve this part.
I still need to do something with this surface. It has a vac form look. It's far too smooth. Now there are plenty of products out there that would solve this straight from the tub. But they usually come out in tubs this size. I bought this some time ago and I've only used it once. So being a person who hates parting with money, I'm going to try and make my own mix using these ingredients. So taking some of this mud, which seems to be drying out, and I can thin it out with this stuff. Then I'll add some of this pigment I'm making a real mess here, or a cake. Oops, too much. I should have done a test piece with this stuff first. So I'm going to apply it around the ground areas, but I'll leave the track marks out as they look very good. So just going to leave that to dry. So it's hard to tell until I've added paint whether this has worked, but it does have that sandpaper feel to the surface. I've also brushed this stuff up against the items laying around just to help lose those radiuses around the shapes. I've applied a Tamiya white here just to give me an even canvas. Then I've mixed these two washes using these colors. I'm not too sure which one to use as a base color. Blind leading the blind here. Let's go for the lighter wash. So with the wash dry, it looks okay. I'm happy with that. I'll use the same weak washes effects on the brick building and the other items as well. Now please excuse the hands, I've been painting the garage door outside before it rains. It's all about priorities. So I'm using these colours to create a terracotta colour for the bricks. And I'm making sure I'll leave some of the white areas showing through. So I'm going to apply the same weak washes to the other items. The principle behind this is to make sure that the base doesn't overpower the two vehicles. With all the washes applied and nearly dry, I'm ready for the final wash. I do like the way the squadron putty still shows through. You can see the mixing palette has been used very well before deciding whether to apply the mixes to the base. So for the final wash, I need to try and tie all this together with a pin wash and pick out those nice trap marks as well. The final mix is crucial. If it all goes wrong or I get the wrong tone, it will kill all those other washes. So the final wash was applied was a very weak mixture of khaki, burnt umber and deck tan. I think it looks okay. It's picked out the detail without being in your face. So let's get this build finish. A bit on the chunky side, but the guns are finished as well. I'm hoping all this fits okay, especially those figures. So I've used PVA glue in the end to fix the items. Not too sure about the kit bag sitting like this, but that's what the instructions say. Figures. Then the guns.
So this was a quick and easy build. All that time and effort has been through the painting. Now considering the scale and the age of this kit, it builds into a nice little piece. So I hope you like the end results and I do hope to see you sometime soon.